Hello again everyone. Today we are going to just do a little introduction on how to determine the polarity of intramolecular bonds. So this is a page that's in your packet and notice that you are going to need your chem helper and the reference tables that are here in order to complete this exercise. And just as a reminder, when you're doing this stuff on the test, um, you're going to be given these tables and values. So the, this is not something that you have to remember to bring. It's also not something that you have to memorize. So here we have our electronegativity values uh, that we have uh, here um, in this table. And then once we determine what the electronegativity values are for the elements that are uh, participating in the bond, then we are going to use this table here to figure out what the bond type is. So we have nonpolar covalent, which means that the electrons are shared equally or nearly equally. We have polar covalent, where there is a clear separation of charge, meaning that one element is very electronegative and pulls electrons toward it, leaving the other element a little bit more positive. And then we have ionic bonds. In an ionic bond, the metal transfers its electron to the non-metal. They are not shared at all. In the covalent bonds, both nonpolar and polar, those electrons are being shared. They're not transferred. But here in the ionic bond, if you've got a difference that's greater than two, you know that one atom has actually given its electron to the other atom. Whoops. Gosh, I hate it when I do that. Uh, okay, so, um, okay, doesn't seem to want to erase. Oh, my word. Okay, there we go. So uh, here we go. Let's take a look at the first couple of problems here just to kind of get you a little bit warmed up. So um, there we go. Sorry for my technical difficulties here. Um, let's see if I can pause this for a moment. Pause, pause. Ah, there we go. Okay. Hi. All right, here we go. So, um, the electron dot structure for carbon dioxide, CO2, is shown here below. And what I want to know are what kind of bonds are the double bonds indicated by the red arrows at points A and B. Now look, just because we have a double bond, it doesn't mean that we have to multiply anything by two or do anything twice. Um, but here's how I approach problems like these. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is look up at my electronegativity value table and I want to uh, see what is the electronegativity value for oxygen. Well, that's 3.5 and carbon is 2.5. And so when I um, do that, I'm just going to write 3.5 here under my oxygens. And I have 2.5 here underneath my carbon. So to figure out what kind of bond I have at point A, these are my two uh, atoms that are participating in the bond. I'm going to subtract my electronegativity values. And remember, we put those in absolute value bars. So we have 3.5 minus 2.5 and I get an answer of one. Well, then I have to go back up to my determining bond type table here, and um, one falls between 0.4 and two. So that means that A is a polar covalent bond, or a PCB, a polar covalent bond. Now we have to, uh, it's, we have to, um, uh, see what is our um, bond here at point B. Well, now we have these two elements. So we have C and a different O that are participating in a uh, bond marked letter B. So again, we have absolute value bars. And uh, here's my carbon 2.5 minus 3.5. That's got to be absolute value. And again, um, my difference is one. And so again, letter B is also a polar covalent bond. So what this means is that 
the electrons are going to be attracted toward the element that has the larger electronegativity value. So if I'm drawing that using the fancy arrows that I showed you back over in our last um, uh, PowerPoint, that means that the electrons are going to be drawn from carbon to the oxygen on the right, and that's going to make my carbon here positive. And electrons are going to be drawn from carbon towards the oxygen on the left, again, making my carbon positive. We can also show this with those fancy O's that I showed you before that mean that we have a partial charge. So this means that my oxygens are both going to have partial negative charges right here, and that my carbon is going to have partial positive charges. And so that's how we would indicate that on the molecule. All right, let's keep looking. So let's keep going. What type of bond exists between an atom of nitrogen and a potassium ion? Well, if we look back at our table, let me erase my stray marks up here. We have, um, we're looking at nitrogen, which is 3.0, and potassium, which is 0.8. So I'm going to come back down here. Nitrogen is 3.0 and potassium is 0 0.8. To figure out what kind of bond would exist between these two elements, I need to put absolute value bars and I'm going to subtract 3.0 minus 0 0.8 and that is going to give me an electronegativity difference of 2.2. And when I look back up here, I can see that 2.2 uh, is greater than 2. So this is an ionic bond. And what this means is that potassium, being the metal, is going to transfer or give its valence electron to nitrogen. Uh, and that's the type of bond that would exist between those two. All right, let's look at the last one here, number three in the molecule below. Determine the polarity of each bond. There is one single bond and one triple bond. Okay, great. So here is my um, single bond here between um, H and C. I'm just going to name this bond letter A. And if you look up at your electronegativity value table, we know that hydrogen is 2.1 and we know that carbon is 2.5. So when we are looking at the bond between hydrogen and carbon and we subtract 2.1 and 2.5, we get a difference of 0.4. And if you have a difference that's equal to 0.4, that means that this is a non-polar covalent bond. So that means that, hello bingo, this is my puppy bingo, uh, what that means is that um, hydrogen and carbon, when they participate in a bond with each other, that means that they're sharing electrons equally or nearly equally, and so the bond is considered nonpolar. So I wouldn't draw like my arrows or my fancy S's with the charges because we don't have a separation of charge in this bond. These two atoms are going to be sharing their stuff, their stuff, their electrons pretty closely, uh, you know, pretty equally with each other. But now let's, I'm gonna use a different color here, I'll use green. And now bingo, oh bingo. Sorry about that interruption. But uh, now let's take a look and see what's going on here in between my carbon atom and my nitrogen atom. Well, here carbon's electronegativity value doesn't change at all. Um, and my value for nitrogen is 3.0. So when I do this subtraction, we have absolute value bars and 2.5 minus 3.0 is going to give us 0.5. And when we look back up at our table, 
that is going to fall between 0.4 and 2. And so this is a polar covalent bond. So this bond here, letter B, is polar covalent bond. So what this means is that when you have carbon and nitrogen participating in a bond, the nitrogen, because it has an electronegativity value that's larger than carbon's, nitrogen is going to attract electrons toward it. So this nitrogen side is going to be more uh, negative than my carbon side. And so we can show that with one of these fancy arrows like that. And we can also show that with a partial positive and a partial negative. Because even though nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, it, it, I mean, this wasn't an ionic bond, so it's not like carbon is giving its electrons to nitrogen at all. It's just that nitrogen, the, the electrons are spending more time around the nitrogen, um, making that side of the molecule more negative. Um, and just remember that since the bond here between carbon and hydrogen is um, nonpolar covalent, those electrons are just kind of stay, hanging out around here very equally. So like this, um, what's going to happen here is that nitrogen is just going to pull the electrons toward it, um, making this side of the molecule um, more electron heavy, while this side of the molecule is like more electron light. All right, so you guys do the rest of this um, on your own and then go back and check the key. And I hope that you found this helpful. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.